Today you are going to learn how to play the Karo Khan defense, which happens after white plays e4, the king's pawn, and you respond with c6, and on your second move you will play d5. Normally what white does here is play the second pawn, and then you respond this way. White of course can also move a knight or this knight out uh, as early as move two, but for now let's try to be principled. White plays two pawns in the center, and you play d5. The way we can break down the Karakhan starting position is the fact that white has three options with the e-pawn. White can push it, white can capture your pawn, or white can leave this pawn here and protect it, or in some cases just forget that it's not guarded and you will take it in that case. Let's start with the easiest one. Let's start with white takes. Let's, you recapture. Now, in this position, essentially white has two ways of playing. White can either play the move c4 and challenge your pawn immediately, which is called the Panov variation, or white can just develop pieces normally and not really challenge your setup at all. So that way, if white develops normally, your next moves are basically automatic. You're going to play knight c6 and knight f6, okay, knights before bishops. Then you will decide where to put this light squared bishop. Maybe you want to put it on f5 or g4. Maybe you get pinned and you want to play bishop d7. After you decide what to do with the light squared bishop, you will move this pawn, get your dark squared bishop out, and then you will castle. Let's see what that looks like. So I said nice first. Let's say something like this. Now you will get your bishop out to f5. g4, excuse me, g4 can be good if there's a pin, but right now there's no pin because the bishop is here. Castles, e6, bishop f4, bishop e7 or d6 is completely fine. Let's say rookie one in castles. Congratulations, you now know how to play the exchange variation of the Karakhan defense. Um, your next moves could be playing on the queen side. This is, this is normally what, what is possible. Sometimes you can hop your knight into the center of the board, but in general, I'm not gonna go too crazy on the, on the in-depth analysis. This is how you play the exchange. Now, when white tries to play an early c4, what I recommend is starting out with the knights as well. But here, when c4 happens, I, I actually recommend playing a bit more solidly with e6 right away, uh, just to solidify your center. And then you can, after developing your pieces, put your bishop on b7. So when c4 happens, go for e6. Let's say something like this. And then after castles, castles, maybe you play b6 and bishop b7. Another thing that you can consider is that when this bishop moves once, you can take the pawn. And that will make the bishop move a second time. So a little trick there, you make your opponent uh, move the bishop a second time, and then you castle and play b6, bishop b7, and you have a nice and solid structure. So that's the exchange. That's, that's the position after white captures. Now, white also can just play a move that protects the pawn. Now, any time um, this pawn is uh, left there, you take it, okay? And you do that, they recapture normally. Uh, there is also one gambit here. That gambit is called the Black Mardemer Gambit, and that's with F3. And basically, white wants you to take and help them develop with a big initiative. Against this, I recommend just pushing. Just give the pawn back, leave this pawn ugly, and continue with your natural development. The protect variation of the Karo Khan, or the classical variation, is very solid. Uh, you have two ways of playing it. I'm going to give you every single way. You have knight f6 right away, challenging this knight's authority in the center. And if they capture, you can explore two options here. The Tartakower, which is the e takes f6, bishop out, castles, very solid. You do have doubled pawns, but they're very nice to protect against the king invasion. Or you have the more dynamic and crazy gf6. Now, gf6 is called Bronstein Larsen, and g takes f6 allows you to get the open g file and allows you quick queenside development, and you're going to try to castle the long way, okay? So knight f6, now they also don't have to take, in which case you just need to develop your pieces. So you can fianchetto and castle, um, you can play the bishop out to g4, obviously you can't play bishop f5 anymore, but even when they retreat, I sometimes like to go crazy h5, h4. Some people will retreat. Those people don't really know what they're doing. And what's considered the classical main line is bishop f5, okay? So bishop f5 attacks the knight. Sometimes you'll trade it. If the knight comes back, you also come back. If they try to trap your bishop, make a little space for it. This is the main line. There have been tens of thousands of games played here. Uh, this is not a full openings course. I'm just giving you uh, a breakdown of the theory around this position. But the protect variation or the classical variation 
in general is not too scary with the knight uh you can just take and go for this knight f6 or bishop f5 setup with e6 as well the one thing about the protect variation this one looks a little bit scare uh, looks a little bit uh strange not scary but it's actually pretty dangerous it's called the fantasy variation and against this what i like to do is i like to just go g6 bishop g7 and then slowly try to chip away at white center so something like this this might happen white tries to castle queen side um you can play different moves here like taking at some moment and developing that's one way to play this position uh, another way is the very open fantasy variation which is when you play takes takes and just launch out with e5 and of course then if they capture you don't take the queen but you have this nasty check and you're attacking the e-pawn as well so there's also e6 the very very solid anti-fantasy variation but uh, that is one thing that you should know. This is for the more advanced players. You will be facing F3 uh, quite a bit, uh, I think, much more than folks that are beginners. And I should just say that, you know, if white starts out with a, with, a, with a knight move, all of the same stuff applies. There could be the advance, there could be the captures, and, you know, if they play something like this, just take. Just take and go knight F6 or go bishop F5. It's all the same. Now, let's look at the advanced variation. There are two ways to play the advanced variation. The variation that I like to suggest for folks, which is uh, c5. The immediate counter strike in the center. Um, and if, if, if basically if white does not take this pawn, white plays knight f3 or white plays c3 trying to keep the center together. Your next few moves are very natural. You're going to play something like knight c6. Move this bishop out depending on where this knight is. If the knight goes to f3, you will pin it. And then try to play e6. Important to move the bishop, then play e6, so you don't block the bishop in. Uh, at a certain moment, you will take on d4 and finish your development, so something like this. Um, in a lot of these positions, the d4 pawn becomes a liability for white. Notice how I did that. I took the knight to destabilize white center, then took and then played e6. The development of these pieces is a little bit tricky, but your knight comes out to f5 or to g6 excuse me, or to g6. So it's going to take the knight a couple moves to develop in the advanced variation, uh, but you should be able to do it with ease. The most critical approach is to take this pawn. Now, I still recommend knight c6. There's a little bit of venom here. You know, white can play like f4, for example, which is in my course, but the same principles apply. If the knight comes out, the bishop comes out, and after the bishop comes out, you will try to regain the c pawn with your bishop and have a nice and steady position. Uh... The other way, if you don't want to play c5, is bishop f5. This is considered the main line, and now your approach is to play c5, but by playing e6 and c5 immediately. The most challenging setup to the bishop f5 variation is called the short variation. White plays knight f3 and bishop b2 and castles. Uh, you can do a little bit of exploration there. Another very aggressive system as well is knight c3 to try to play g4 very early. You've got to be careful not to get your bishop trapped. Uh, and... That is on full display after h4. If the h-pawn moves, you need to respond with the h-pawn, because if you play e6, you will get your bishop trapped. Do not get your bishop trapped. Make sure that your bishop always has some space. If they move the h-pawn early with h4, I highly recommend just h5 and then playing from there. But seeing as this is a brief video on the Karo Khan, I think that basically covers everything you need to know. From, from Just from watching this video, you should be able to go play some practice games, get a little bit of experience, and grind from there. Uh, hope this was useful. Uh, I should also say right before we go that since this is only against the king's pawn, a good supplement to this is the Slav defense against d4. So you can start a lot of your games with c6, d5, and getting familiar with those structures. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. In particular, which openings you want me to cover in a 10-minute video just like this one. Like the video if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next 10 minutes openings video.